Welcome to practice. Today's practice is a Budokan inspired flow. So it's going to be a little bit of hip mobility work. You're going to be asked to explore your own anatomy and your own physicality a little bit. This is a challenging practice. So um, I would say it's probably a level two intermediate practice. So be prepared for that. Um, adapt as you need to, but I won't be discussing and going through the modifications for this practice. There are a lot of practices on my channel that are suitable for beginners and for new movement practitioners. You're going to start in a comfortable seat. You can sit in Seiza with your feet tucked underneath of you. If this is uncomfortable for you, you can sit cross-legged. And then take your left hand into your lap and bring the back of your right hand into the palm of your left with your thumbs touching. Sit up nice and tall and close your eyes. And take a moment just to drop into your body and your breath. Start to arrive and settle. Tantra teaches that we are the triadic serpentine self. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about that today. It's a whole teaching. But what I do want to say is that what the Tantra says is that all of the possibilities and the potentialities of who we can be are all existing in the serpentine layer, the serpentine self. And who we are going to be depends upon our willingness to excavate our shadow selves, to go deep into the serpent's lair and to hold all of the paradoxes that as humans we hold within ourselves. So often, and so many spiritual traditions teach that there is some liberation from the very things that make us human. And my proposal to you is that there's no empowerment in denying what is human but that our true empowerment comes when we are willing to acknowledge everything that we hold within the singularity of ourselves. Our ability to cause harm, our toxicity, and our ecstasy. The paradox of the ways in which we engage and disengage. poisons and our medicines because when we fully own and know that we are possessed of contrariety and paradox then it's conferred upon upon us the privilege of choosing what to do with all of that information and with all of those parts of ourselves but when we're in denial of any aspect of who we are there's tension and resistance and those shadow pieces come out, they seep in, they explode, we implode and explode, and our goal is to concentrate and to radiate. So where are you willing to go? What shadows are you willing to excavate? What skins are you willing to shed? Knowing that all future selves will still contain every previous self. For me, the spiritual path is not a denial of our humanity, but a full embracing. A willingness to be with our own shadows and to sit with the shadows of others in total acceptance and love. And I've said it before, I'll say it again, tension and flow are the same energy. The difference is our resistance. And the more of ourselves we want to become requires that we drop that resistance and be willing to see it all without contraction. So even now, how can you soften a little bit in your interior space around the pieces of yourself that might feel a bit scary or unsavory? Can you welcome them in? So that those demons are no longer ghosts that haunt you, but integrated pieces of who you are. And so 
open the practice with some couple of bhakti breathing, skull shining breath, just to open our windows and invite in some purification, some heat, a little bit of fire. Take your arms up and wide in a V-shape, equilateral triangle for strength, structure, and stability, and make fists with your thumbs pointing towards each other. Wrap your armpits towards your heart. Inhale three quarters of the way, and begin. Inhale and hook your thumbs over your head. Hold your breath, lift your collarbones, lengthen your chin towards your chest. And as you exhale, draw a circle around yourself with your thumbs. And from here, Take your right hand out to the floor in front of you, making a half of a triangle. Take your left hand down, making a half of a triangle, so you have a full triangle. Again, strength, structure, and stability. And then lengthen your chest forward and bow into your practice. Press the floor back up. Shift your weight forward. Place your right hand on the floor and your left hand and then widen your knees into a four-point base so that your knees are under your hips, your hands are underneath of your shoulders. And then just begin to explore this shape. And I'd like you to avoid doing cat-cows right now. The habit is to move into familiarity, into a shape that you make a lot, that you've been told is an acceptable shape to make. And I want you to instead start to explore your physicality here. What transitions, what movements can you take in this position, this quadrupedal, very primitive position that's so familiar to us? And don't worry about, you of course can take hints from me, but also don't worry about it. My anatomy is different than your anatomy and what might feel appropriate in my body today might not feel appropriate in yours. Tune in to your own somatic experience. Move a little closer to yourself. Another moment. And now come back into the midline. Find that four point base again. Push the floor away, finding what we call the cobra hood. So you're protracting your scapula, which means they're broadening wide across your back. You're pushing the ground away harder than it's pushing you. You're wrapping your armpits towards your heart and you're pulling your navel point back and then step your right foot back onto the ball of your right foot, get powerful in that leg, and then step your left foot back so you are in a plank pose. And we'll work through some spinal undulation techniques. So here, push the floor away even more, float right up onto your toes, round your back, chin to your chest, and then slowly start to extend your spine, rolling up and back into the construct of downward facing dog. And here, once again, just move around for a moment. You can move through your hips. Move through. Rolling from plank to down dog as you wish. Just move around a bit. 
walk your dog, whatever is calling to you. And now from here, round your back, tuck your chin to your chest and undulate your spine forward almost to a plank. And then bend your knees, arch your back and roll back up through down dog. And keep that circular movement going, undulating, creating a wave in your spine, seat up and back. And then tucking your tailbone under, rolling your spine forward, knees bent arch again and find that wave and then the next time you're back in downward facing dog hold down dog and do that a little more formally in a rolling wave so float up onto the balls of your feet stick your pelvic floor even higher to the sky Engage your legs. And now tuck your tailbone underneath of you. Pull your pubic bone towards your navel. Engage your abdomen. Hollow your front body. Start to round your back vertebrae by vertebrae. Shift forward just until your shoulders are over your wrists. And then start to drop. Don't drop, but melt your pubic bone towards the floor. Super strong in your legs into floating up dog. And pause here. Broaden your collarbones. Stay on the balls of your feet. And then if you wish, move around a little bit here and you might come to your knees and shift over to one side. Play around with where you can go from this floating up dog. And then come back to the center. Find floating up dog once again. Tuck your chin to your chest. Start to find that cobra hood. Push the floor away. Come way up onto your toes. Round your back and undulate back into downward facing dog. Look forward at your hands and then look past your hands. We're going to float our feet to malasana, to a prayer squat. Bend your knees. Crouch, recoil, get powerful in your legs, and float. Lift your hands up. And here, once again, play around. Move through the range in your hips. And again, you can take any movement here that feels appropriate to you. How can you move in and out of this construct of prayer squat. Where can you explore? The serpentine self knows that the comfortable places will never stay that way for long. And they hold the ability to sit in discomfort to make themselves small when they need to be made small and to make themselves known when they need to be known. Come back to your prayer squat. Take your hands behind your head and interlace your fingers. Inhale and open your elbows wide. Push your head back into your hands. And now tuck your chin to your chest and roll yourself forward, rounding in. And then from your tailbone, unfurl and open up your cobra hood, elbows wide. One more time, round in. Undulate the spine, roll up and open. One more because we like triads in the tantra. We like threes, roll forward and roll up. One thing is the singularity, two is a polarity, three is a relationship. Bring your hands to the floor and straighten your legs, spin your heels open. And now lean forward into your hands like you were going to do a handstand press and just shift your feet together, heel toe them in. Bend your knees and bring your hands to the backs of your legs. 
from your tailbone, start to round your back, roll up a little more than halfway. And then when you're here, start to spin your elbows open and roll your chest open into a halfway lift, a little back bend. And then roll back down, fold over your legs. Again, unfurl your spine, spinal undulation forward and roll down. One more time, undulate the spine forward and roll back down. Trace the backs of your legs, push into your feet, hollow your belly and roll all the way to stand, super slow. Head is the last to come up. Inhale, float your arms up. Exhale, hinge from your hip crease, swan dive and bow forward, fold in on yourself. Wrap your arms behind your legs. You can bend your knees if you need to. Lengthen the front of your spine. Very good. Bend your knees and sit back into Utkatasana, chair pose. And then take your arms out in front of you, flip your palms towards the floor and sit lower. And sit lower. And sit lower. And if you need to put your hands down, you can. You can start to widen the knees if you need to. Sit all the way down, bring your seat to the floor. And now lift your legs into Navasana, push through the balls of your feet. So nice. Bend your knees, lower your feet back to the floor. You can use your hands if you need to, otherwise just reach forward, shift into your feet and fold over your legs once again. Plant your hands, step your right foot back and your left foot back to downward facing dog. Float up onto the balls of the feet for a rolling vinyasa. Poke your pelvic floor high to the sky. Tuck your tailbone underneath of you Scoop through your abdomen, roll forward till your shoulders come over your wrists. And now bend your elbows, chaturanga, lower all the way to the floor. Bend your knees and push into your feet and drag your butt forward so your knees come to the floor. Press the tops of the feet down. Pull your scapula down your back. And then from here, tuck your tailbone, pull your abdomen in and roll open into upward facing dog. Push into the baby toe side of your feet. Tuck your chin to your chest, push the floor away, round up and back and roll to downward facing dog once again. Look at your hands. Look past your hands and float to Malasana. Lift your fingers, reach forward, shift around again. Less time here than last time. And then bring your fingertips to the floor, palms flat. Lean forward into your hands and heel toe your feet together. Fold over your legs. We'll roll straight up, bend your knees, tuck your tailbone, hollow your belly, roll up to stand. Inhale, circle your arms up. Exhale, swan dive, fold over your legs. Wrap your forearms behind your calves. Bend your knees, chair pose. Bring your palms parallel to the floor and lower your seat. Super slow, all the way down until your butt comes to the floor and lift your legs. Again, you can use your hands if you need to. Hold here, soft smile. Squeeze your legs towards your chest. Lift your sternum. Bend your knees. Shift your weight forward into your feet. And plant your hands forward fold. Step back, downward facing dog. Rolling vinyasa. Poke your tailbone to the sky. Float to the balls of your feet. Tuck your pubic bone towards your navel center. Follow your front body, roll forward, and lower into chaturanga to the floor. Drag your knees in, put your butt up in the air. 
tuck your tailbone underneath of you, scoop through your belly, push the floor away, and unfurl into upward facing dog. Tuck your chin to your chest, push, find that cobra head, and roll up and back to downward facing dog, and breathe. One more time, look forward past your hands. Float to Malasana, shift the hips. Hands to the floor, straighten your legs. Shift forward into your hands and heel toe your feet together. Bow in, bend your knees, trace your hands along the sides of your body, roll up. Take your arms up to the sky. Hinge from your hip crease and bow in. Bend your knees, chair pose. Lower your arms parallel to the floor and start to sit into full Utkatasana. Bring your butt to the floor and boat pose, Navasana. Good, listen, we're changing. Start to lower your legs to the floor, pushing through the balls of your feet as you take your arms up and overhead. I'm gonna wiggle back on my mat. Push through the balls of your feet, reach your arms long. Push your lower back into the floor, lengthen your tailbone, lift your legs. Now start to curl your tailbone, your spine up off of the mat and reach your legs up and back behind you in this inverted shape, sort of a modified plow pose. Tuck your right ankle to your left hamstring, so bend your right knee. And now from here, roll forward and pause. So this is um, movement into a warrior's base, a combat base. So your right shin is on the floor, your left foot is on the floor, your arms are out in front of you. You can use your hands if you need to. Shift forward onto your right shin and tuck your right toes underneath of you so you're powerful and athletic. You're in the ball of your left foot. We're gonna move into Ardha Chandrasana Half Moon. I want you to try to not put your left hand on the floor, fight for it. If you need to use your hands, you can. Start to shift the weight into your left foot and then unfurl. Extend your right leg long, extend your right arm to the sky. Push through the ball of your right foot, demi-point that back foot. Good, bend both of your knees, tuck your right toes to the floor, lower your right shin down, lower your seat down. Good, you can use your arms, lower your legs out in front of you. Push through the ball of your feet, scoop through your belly and roll back. Take your arms up by your ears. Once again, push your low back into the floor, lift your legs. Push through the ball of your feet and scoop and roll up and back to this modified plow. Bend your left knee, take your left ankle to your right hamstring. Super active in that right leg. Roll forward, pause. Right foot, left shin is on the floor. Now shift the weight forward. You can use your hands if you need to and curl your left toes under so you're in this combat base. And then from here, lean into your right foot and start to open up, look down at the ground into Ardha Chandrasana. Very good. Bend your left knee, bend your right knee, left toes down, left shin down, lower your seat. Extend the legs forward. We're gonna add on to this sequence. Roll down, push through the balls of your feet, hollow your belly, take your arms up overhead, Imprint your low back into the mat, hover your legs, lift them up. Coil, roll up and back into this modified plow. Bend your right knee, roll forward, and come up into your combat base. First part's the same. From here, lift and lengthen into Ardha Chandrasana. Right leg is long. Push through the ball of your right foot. So nice. Good, now from here, bend your left knee and step your right foot onto the floor. And now transition, spin your arms out horizontal and come into a goddess pose. 
on the balls of your feet. Now from here, cross your left arm up, right arm under, and now drag your left foot in, crossing your left knee behind your right knee, and extend the arms horizontally. So your left hand is coming towards your right heel, your right arm is up to the sky, look down at your left hand. Good, we're gonna come out of that and repeat it. So cross right arm over left, slide your left foot back out, lower your left hand, and lift back into Ardha Chandrasana, right leg to the sky. Let's try again. Bend your left knee, lower your right foot, come into a goddess squat, arms out to the side. Now cross left arm up, right arm under. You're gonna cross at your forearms as you slide your left leg behind your right, bringing your knees to touch, sitting low, and now extend your arms horizontally. So nice, very good job. Now from here, step your left foot back towards the top of the mat, pass into that goddess squat. Now swing your arms around towards your left leg so you're in sort of a lunge position. Step your right foot in and then lower onto your right shin, combat base, left foot, lower your seat to the floor, extend your legs long. Very good job. I believe that you did a good job. <laughs> Push through the balls of your feet super hard. Roll down. Take your arms over your ears. Lift your legs. Lengthen up and back overhead. Bend your left knee in. Roll forward. Combat base, right foot, left shin. Roll forward. Tuck your left toes under. Weight your right foot and unfurl. Ardha Chandrasana, half moon. So nice. Bend your right knee, find your goddess squat. Balls of the feet, take your right arm over, your left arm under, and then slide your right leg behind your left. Right knee is in left knee, arms are extended horizontally. Let's reverse it just like we did on the other side. Step your right foot back out, lean into right side body, lift your left leg, Ardha Chandrasana. Good, bend your right knee, find goddess. Circle your right arm, keep your hip shoulders over your hips, cross your arms, step your right foot in. This is called coiling dragon. Good, this time, step your right foot back out and now swing, pivot your torso so you're in sort of a lunge position, back knee is bent, step your left foot in. Lower down into your combat base, extend your legs long. Roll down onto your back. Take your arms overhead and push through the balls of your feet. From here, we're gonna add on more layers. So lift your legs as before. Take them up and overhead into that modified plow position. Tuck your right knee, right ankle in. Pardon, yes, right knee. Roll forward, <laughs> find that combat base, shift forward once again. Tuck your right toes under, and then open up Ardha Chandrasana as before. Very good. From here, just like before, bend your left knee, find the goddess squat, circle your left arm over, right arm under, glide the left foot back, coiling dragon. Good, extend that left arm long, step the left foot back out, and then swivel arms forward onto the ball of your right foot. So now you should be in a position where your left knee is over your left ankle, your right knee is bent back behind you, your arms are forward. Take your left arm and lengthen it back. Turn your chest and twist. Right arm forward, left arm back. Good, now from here, circle, right arm up, left arm forward, and pin your back heel down. Find where you're to. Adjust your feet if you need to. Just like we did before, take your left arm up, your right arm under, pass through goddess on the balls of the feet, and now extend the arms horizontally as you turn your toes open to about two o'clock and your left pinky edge of your foot parallel to the back edge of your mat. This we call double block. Look down at your left hand. Let's do that again. So circle your left arm back forward, pivot the feet back to warrior two position, circle the arms back, come onto the ball of the foot through the twist, and then re-extend your arms forward. That was probably a little confusing doing it in rewind. 
So come back to your position, left knee over your left ankle, right hip over the right knee. From here, left arm back, right arm forward, twist. Good, now shift your left arm forward, your right arm back, open up warrior two. To keep moving, take your left arm, circle it up and around, pass through the goddess squat, pin both of your heels down, extend your arms horizontally, right toes are pointing towards two o'clock, back edge of the foot is parallel to the mat, double block, super nice. Now from here, take your arms out in front of you, spin onto the heel of your left foot and do a half squat just part way down. Stand up again, and now spin towards your left foot. Bring your hands down into a low lunge position. Plant your right palm. Pick your left hand up. Tuck your right foot through and kick your right foot forward. Pull your left elbow back. So you're pushing through the ball of your right foot. Now recoil, bend that right knee in. Step it back into your lunge. Very good, step back, downward facing dog. Lots of transitions, take a nice deep breath. Don't worry, we're gonna do it again on the other side and then we're gonna repeat that whole thing. Look forward at your hands, look past your hands, bend your knees, cross your legs and bring your toes to the right behind your wrists and now pick them up, knees into your chest, lower your butt, extend your legs, Navasana, and then lower down on to your mat, onto the floor. I'm gonna wiggle back for the sake of the camera. It really doesn't matter if you're on your mat. I rarely use one. Push through the balls of your feet, lift your legs, coil up and back, plow pose. Bend your left knee. Good, roll forward onto left shin, right foot, come up into your combat base, curl your left toes under. Shift the weight into your right foot and find Ardha Chandrasana Half Moon. Bend your right knee, step into goddess pose, circle the right arm up, the left arm over, and then glide your right foot in, coiling dragon, right knee into left foot. Good, circle the right arm, step your right foot out towards the top of your mat and then pivot so that you are on the ball of your left foot and your right knee is stacked over your right ankle. Circle your right arm back and your left arm forward and twist. And then circle, right arm forward, left arm back, warrior two. Good, now here's that funky transition. Pass through goddess pose on the balls of your feet, circling right arm over, left arm back. You're gonna cross at your forearms, pin your right heel down so the pinky edge of the foot is parallel to the back edge of the mat. Left toes are towards 10 o'clock, double block. Let's reverse it just like we did on the other side. So spin through, come back to warrior two again. And then left arm forward, right arm back, ball of the left foot, twist. Take your arms forward. I hope you're sweating, I am. Take your right arm back and twist. Circle left arm back, right arm forward, warrior two. Pass through goddess pose, double block. Nice, now from here, you might have to spin the left foot a bit, come onto the right heel. Reach your arms forward and squat. Stand up, pivot towards your right foot. Plant your hands, low lunge. Plant your left hand, pick your right hand up. Coil, left leg through. Drag your right elbow back, push through the ball of your left foot. Recoil, left knee in, step back to your lunge and step back downward facing dog hold and breathe i'm going to flow through that on both sides one more time really get it in your body might do it one more time after that i won't preemptively lie to you look forward at your hands bend your knees and cross your ankles let them land behind your wrists and then lower your butt down and lift your legs, Navasana. Slowly lower to the floor, push through the balls of your feet. I'm gonna wiggle back again, just for the sake of the camera. Lift your legs, plow all the way up and back. Tuck your right knee in, heel towards your left seat. Roll forward, plant your left foot. 
shift onto your shin, ball of your right foot, and then open up. Ardha Chandrasana, half moon. Bend your left knee, step your right foot out, pass through goddess, left arm over, right arm under, step the back foot in to coiling dragon. Very good. Step your left foot back forward, pivot, arms forward, right knee is bent. Take your left arm back and your right arm forward and twist. Good, shift left arm forward, right arm back, warrior two. Keep circling the arms, left arm crosses right, spin open into a double block. Take your arms forward, take a half squat on your left heel. Good, this time just pivot right forward into the lunge. Left foot, left hand, plant your right hand, pick your left hand up, take your right foot through, kicking lion. Drag your left elbow back, right foot through. Recoil the right knee, step back and press back to downward facing dog. Just for fun, float up onto the toes. Poke your pelvic floor high, and then rolling vinyasa. Tuck your tail underneath of you. Hollow your belly, roll forward, lower down, chaturanga. Drag your knees in, arch your back, press the tops of the feet down. Tuck your tailbone, pull your abs in, push the floor away powerfully, unfurl, up dog. Chuck your chin to your chest, push the floor away, Scoop and roll back, downward facing dog. Look forward at your hands, look past your hands. Cross your ankles, jump through. Navasana, push through the demi point of the foot, lower your legs, lower your arms, roll all the way down. Lift your legs, take them up and overhead, plow. Bend your left knee, roll forward, find your combat base, and unfurl right into Ardha Chandrasana. Open up, lengthen your tailbone. Bend your right knee, pass through goddess, and glide your right foot back, coiling dragon. Circle the right arm forward, step back, and circle around into that low lunge position. Right knee over right ankle, Left hip over left knee. Circle your right arm back, your left arm forward, and twist. And then keep circling the arms, warrior two. Keep circling the arms, double block. Arms forward, half squat. And then spin towards your right foot, plant your left hand. Kicking lion, left foot through, push through the ball of your foot. Bend your left knee, step back to your lunge, and press back downward. Facing dog. I feel like you're probably just starting to get the movement, so we're gonna do the whole thing one more time. You can take a moment and catch your breath. Bend your knees, look forward, cross your ankles, and step or float all the way through. Navasana, lower down. Take your arms overhead, lift your legs and coil up and back to plow. Bend your right knee, roll forward, combat base, and open up. We're just flowing now, Ardha Chandrasana. Bend your left knee, cross through goddess pose, coiling dragon, left foot in. Circle the left arm out as you step the left foot back out wide. Spin around into that modified lunge. Left arm back, right arm forward, twist. Keep rolling through the arms, warrior two. Circle left arm on top of right, double block. Half squat, lower down. Spin towards your left foot, plant your right arm. Step your right foot through, drag your left elbow back. Recoil the right knee and step back, downward facing dog. Couple breaths. Look forward, last time. Cross your ankles, jump all the way through. Legs up, Navasana, lower down. 
Take your legs up and overhead, plow. Bend your left knee. Roll forward and unfurl into Ardha Chandrasana. Bend your right knee, step through goddess, coiling dragon, right knee behind left. Circle your right arm, step your right foot out, pivot into this modified lunge. Right arm back, left arm forward, twist. Left arm back, right arm forward, warrior two. Circle the right arm on top of the left, double block. Shoot your arms forward, spin onto your right heel, half squat. Spin towards your left foot, plant your left hand, drag your left leg through, right elbow back. Recoil the left knee and step back, downward facing dog. Breathe. and drop to your knees. Walk your knees out past your mat so that your knees are in line with your ankles and come down onto your forearms, frog pose. Inhale and as you inhale, I want you to pack air in your abdomen, pull your navel point back and now push your knees into the floor, ankles into the floor, like you are trying to squeeze them towards each other, but don't let them move and work hard. Amp it up to 30%, 40, 50, 60, 60. Give about 80% of your max effort to squeezing your legs in. Good, now relax. Now use all of this outer hip stuff like you were trying to lift your legs off of the floor. It's not possible, but squeeze for 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Relax into your range. Soften. Good deep breaths. A little functional range conditioning. We're going to do it one more time. Joint mobility. Hold. Just push down. Ankles, knees. Squeeze your inner thighs, your adductors, 10%. Give about 20% max effort. Keep ramping it up, abdomen in. Push into the floor with your forearms. Your whole body is working. 80% of your max effort, go. Push, 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 push. Relax, and now go the other way. Squeeze all of your outer hip stuff, outer thigh stuff, like you were trying to lift off of the floor. Go, go, go. Push, abs in, and then relax into the range. Good, shift forward and just extend your legs back. Nice deep breaths. Extend your arms out to a T-shape and then bend your left elbow, bend your left knee, right ear to the floor. Coil up and back over yourself, maybe coming all the way to your left foot, opening up the right shoulder. Breathe. Then back onto your belly, switch, left arm long, right elbow bent, right knee bent, roll over that left shoulder, little scorpion stretch for the chest. Spin back to the center. Reach your arms back towards your ankles Lift your legs, bend your knees, reach back and grab a hold of your ankles, kick into your hands, down your asana, floor bow. Let go of your feet, but keep the bow shape. Extend your legs and lower down. Stack your hands, shift your hips side to side. Bring your hands next to your chest. Come to a seat on your heels. You can bring your feet hip distance apart, knees hip distance apart. Hinge forward, grab a hold of your right heel, 
And now circle your left arm out in front of you on the floor, laterally side bend, and then start to press yourself up, roll open into a half Ustrasana, half camel. Swim your left arm down as you pick your right hand up. Lean over to the left lateral side bend twist, lower your butt down, trace the floor, circle your right hand back to your heel. Very good. Go the other way, circle your right arm along the floor, so lateral side bend, and then start to push, coil open, half camel pose. Circle your right arm back, left arm up, half Ustrasana, lower your butt down, lateral side bend, sweep your left arm along the floor. Good. Again, left arm circles around towards the right, lateral side bend, coil open Ustrasana, right arm up. Lean to the left, lower your seat, and circle around. Circle the right arm along the floor. Coil open, Ustrasana. Left arm up, circle around. Good, from here, bring your hands to your sacrum. Inhale, flat back, push to stand on your knees as you circle your arms up, just neutralize the lower back. Exhale, hinge from your hips, circle your arms, fold forward. Two more, inhale. And ex. Last time, inhale. And ex. Pause. And roll your spine up, sit back on your heels. Swing your feet out to the right so that your right ankle is in the arch of your left foot. Take your left arm behind your back. Sweep your right arm to the sky. Exhale, twist left. Take the back of your right hand to the outside of your left knee. If you have space, slide your palm to the floor. If you still have space, you can swing your left arm behind your back and grab your right bicep. And then roll your chest open to the right. Turn your head towards your right shoulder. Drop your chin and then lean your head back until you get a stretch up your sternocleidal mastoid. That's that muscle from neck to shoulder. This pose is called Bharadvajasana. He's a sage in the yoga tradition. I like to call it sexy mermaid pose. Take a deep breath. Keep turning your navel to the left, chest to the right. Use your in-breath to come out of the rotation. Swing your legs to the other side. Left ankle in the arch of the right foot. Take your right arm behind you, left arm high to the sky. Twist to the right. Take your left palm to the floor if you have the space. If there's room, you can take your right arm behind your back and catch your left bicep. Spiral your left shoulder open. Turn your navel to the right. Turn your head towards your left shoulder. Drop your chin and then lean your head back. Very good, use your inhale, come out of there. Extend your legs along the floor. You can bend your knees if you need to, but I want your pelvic floor straight down. Inhale, take your arms up, hinge from your hip crease, fold forward, grab the balls of your feet. Inhale, pull back with a flat back. Exhale, bow in. Take your arms alongside of your ears, inhale, sit all the way up, strong. Exhale, from the hip crease, fold forward, grab your feet. Pull back, flat back, draw the scapula back, protract your scapula, or excuse me, retract your scapula, and exhale, fold in. Arms alongside of your ears last time, sit up. Exhale, bow forward. Listen, pull back halfway, and now fold in. Breathe. Paschimottanasana, seated forward, bend. I 
and from the front of your spine and sit all the way up come down onto your back bend your knees into your chest grab a hold of your big toes straighten your legs to the sky and then open them up to a straddle and then bend your knees and come back into your chest and just do that two more times legs to the sky legs wide in a straddle bend your knees and circle back in one more time feet to the sky open to a straddle bend your knees and come back to the midline bring the soles of your feet together interlace your fingers around the pinky edge of your feet and let your hips and groin relax lengthen your tailbone along the mat hug your knees into your chest and then lengthen your legs along the floor let your feet fall open Nestle your shoulder blades underneath of you and close your eyes. Take up space. Take three or four ujjayi breaths here. Your chest still and your abdomen soft. And rest on your back. Once you've completed those three or four breaths, relax the breath completely and allow yourself to rest in effortless awareness. Body breathes effortless. My teacher says being yourself is no small matter. Of all the people you have to live with, yourself comes first because it's there even before you are and last because it's always the next self you experience. We slither and slide through self because what we invent makes us and that we have been invented is why we seek ourselves. And we call this process of skidding and scaping the serpentine self. Yourself is always in crisis when you're paying attention. The order of crisis experience is keenly aware that every moment of comfort and contentment is real because it's evanescent, because the impression of safety is a necessary illusion. Whatever you are enjoying now can in another moment become the source of danger or misery and to cultivate our most evasive and subtle selves will need the serpent sight, which uses all of its senses to see every part of itself to experience change, even while still remaining wholly still. And we are vigilantly attentive to change, collecting the dynamics of our somatic and emotional life. We aver catastrophe by making every contingency feel conventional. This is not because we have stopped the self in crisis, but because we have attended to it. What am I saying? I'm saying we have to learn to move into crisis deliberately. I'm saying that every self in your past is part of the self of who you are now. I'm saying that you need to be like the serpent to use the whole of your sensory and emotional experience and intellect to slither and slide your way through a world that is chaotic and always in crisis and falling apart so that you can do good and be good in a world that is not. This is the serpentine self. It's playing the edge of who you were and who you are and every possibility of who you might be. As you rest here for these last few minutes, maybe there is some piece of you that you can integrate, and maybe there's some piece of you that's ready to be shed. So 
rather than identifying yourself with all the objects of your experience, whatever has come up for you in practice, can you allow yourself to rest a little more in the witness and simply observe yourself with curiosity? Begin to deepen your breath. Take some small movements in your fingers and your toes. Make your way to a fetal position on your left side. Use your right hand and press yourself up to a meditation seat. Close your eyes and establish kaya stira, the body still. And bring your chin towards your chest. There's no avoiding catastrophe and crisis, but we can learn to move through it. We can begin to see that the self itself is made of crisis. And we try to make it look and feel easy even when it's not. And when we evade our crisis, what we're doing is avoiding and evading ourselves. We're avoiding our nature. And what yoga is is an invitation to engage, to engage with ourselves to inhabit a greater sense of the power of our own consciousness meeting itself. The teacher says you are the sarpa, the serpent in the garden of consciousness. And you are not alone there because you live with all of your other selves, including those that are hidden from you, the selves of light and shadow. You live with friends and enemies too, with possibilities and much that has already been decided like it or not. And as Voltaire reminds us, you're going to need to tend to your garden. It's there, in that garden, being those selves that makes everything grow. It's what you plant, what is planted itself, and all of it needs tending. There's a snake in your garden, and it's you. Try not to be too afraid. You'll need to know when, and you'll need the courage to be yourself, just to be yourself. Every time we move closer to crisis, intentionally and purposefully, we move closer to fear and to overcoming fear, which is ultimately just duality. All fear is anchored in duality. This, not that, life, death, me, you, other. But when we start to see that there is a higher isness, a higher 
reality that's all pervading the duality and the fear that accompanies it starts to crumble and we see grace is pervading everywhere. And we close the practice with the Mahamindraya mantra, it's the victory over the great death from the Rig Veda. Bring your hands over your heart if you know it, you can chant it as well. Om Triambaka Mijamahe Shugandhim Pushti Vardhanam Urva Rukamiva Bandhanam Mrityo Mukshae Amrita Om Triambaka Mijamahe Shugandhim Pushti Vardhanam Urva Rukamiva Bandhanam Mrityo Mukshae Amrita Om Triambika Mijamahe Shugandhim Pushti Vardhanam Urva Rukamiva Bandhanam Mrityo Mukshae Amrita Rub your palms together in front of your face. Cup your palms over your eyes, feeling the warmth of your own touch. Let the darkness in behind your hands. Release your palms and let in the light and welcome your soft back. Thank you.